Next is the teaching to multiple intelligence. Intelligence is a property of the mind that includes many related abilities such as the capacities to reason, plan, solve problems, comprehend language and ideas, learn new concepts, and think abstractly. So, ito yung very definition na intelligence, no? Marami talagang um, scope then ang definition na intelligence. Kasi it includes daw many related abilities such as the capacities to reason, plan, solve problems, comprehend language, and ideas, learn new concepts, and think abstractly. But then, ang intelligence, hindi lang siya um, mamemeasure, no? Sa galing, kagaling mag-memorize, sa um, kagalingan mag- mag-solve ng mathematical problems, ganyan. Hindi lang daw ganyan. Kasi, according to Howard Gardner, meron tayong tinatawag na multiple intelligences. So, Howard Gardner and others assert that there are multiple intelligences and that no single score can accurately reflect a person's intelligence. More importantly, the theory of multiple intelligences implies that people learn better through certain modalities than others, and that the science teacher should design curriculum to address as many modalities as possible. So, tayo as uh, magiging science teachers, kayo, di ba? Kasi elementary school teachers kayo in the future, and you will be um, assigning to teach science so you have to really um, cater the needs of the students no and you have to understand that um, tayo mga tao we have uh, multiple intelligences so hindi lang isa hindi lang tapat tayo nakafocus sa isang type no ng intelligence kundi dapat nating i-consider lahat. So today, we will discuss what are those intelligences na define or inidentify ni Gardner. So sino ang proponent no ng seven intelligences? Si Howard Gardner. First is the logical or mathematical intelligence. It is used when thinking conceptually, computing, looking for patterns, and classifying. So, pag magaling ang isang tao sa pag compute, pag, um, pag look for patterns, at pag classify ng mga bagay-bagay, yan ay, siya ay logical, mathematical, intelligent. Next is linguistic or language intelligence. It is used when learning by listening, verbalizing, reading, translating, and discussing. So, ang, ang linguistic or language intelligence natin daw, no, uh, ma, uh, magagamit natin when, when we listen, verbalize, ganyan, and when we read, translate, and discussing something. Okay. And then, next one is the naturalist intelligence. Used to question, observe, investig observe investigate, and experiment. So, um, natu naturalist intelligence natin magagamit pag meron tayong um, question na, na i-erase. Specifically, questions about the natural world. Kanyan, then, pag mag-observe tayo, pag mag-investigate, at pag mag-experiment. If we are looking or investigating something, or we want to have a result on something that we are doing or we are formulating, so ganyan. Visual or spatial intelligence is used when learning with models, photographs, videos, diagrams, maps, and charts. Pag um, we are inclined to um, learning more or best when we um, see models, photographs, videos, or diagrams. Kanyan, pag meron tayong makikita 
Tapos, mas makalearn tayo because of that, we are visual or spatial intelligent. No? Next is bodily kinesthetic intelligence. Used to process knowledge through bodily sensations, movements, physical activity, loves in companion, volumes, hands-on chemistry, and hands-on physics, and manipulation. So, kapag ang um, isang tao gusto niya mag-manipulate ng mga bagay-bagay, he or she learns best when meron siyang hahawakan, meron siyang na, ma, na manipulate ng mga bagay, meron siyang um, ginagawa, ganyan, na, na, na-apply niya yung mga um, yung mga moves niya, no? Yung paggalaw-galaw ng, mga, ng body niya, ganyan. So, he is or she is bodily kinesthetic intelligent. Basta involves yung paggalaw-galaw, no? Ng katawan. Next, interpersonal intelligence. Used when learning through cooperative learning experiences, group games, group love work, and dialogue. So, ito yung mga interpersonal intelligent na mga tao. They are very inclined in in communicating with other people. No, They understand the feelings of others. They are very um, sympathetic and empathetic. Ganyan. So, Kumbaga, mas nakalearn, makalearn sila best when they are communicating with others, with other people, ganyan. Interpersonal, intrapersonal intelligence is used when learning through self-dialogue, studying, and self-assessment. So, kung ang interpersonal is, may ibang taong involved, no? Sa intrapersonal naman is, ikaw lang. You are... Um, you learn best when you are alone. You you learn best when you do something na ikaw lang, ganyan. So, yun yung mga intrapersonal intelligence. And they can um, understand better no, themselves. No, meron silang self-understanding. Next is musical intelligence. Used when learning through rhythm, melody, and nonverbal sounds in the environment. So, yung mga tao na musically inclined, no? So, sila yung musical intelligent. Um, gusto nila um, mag-engage into music, music, and gusto nila yung mga nota-nota, melody, ganyan. Next is metacognition, teaching students to think about their thinking. So, ito ha, pag um, unfamiliar pa ang term na metacognition, basta marinig natin yung metacognition, it refers to um, thinking about thinking. Okay? Or thinking how you think, ganyan. Ito yung metacognition. John Flavel argues that learning is maximized when students learn to think about their thinking and consciously employ strategies to maximize their reasoning and problem-solving capabilities. A metacognitive thinker knows when and how he learns best and employs strategies to overcome barriers to learning. As students learn to regulate and monitor their thought, processes, and understanding, they learn to adapt to new learning challenges. So, ganyan, no? Basta mga estudyante or um, they learn how to think about their thinking, ganyan. So, they are applying metacognition. So, paano ba natin um, iisipin kung ano yung iisipin natin, ganyan. How we think, what are we thinking, ganyan, what we are thinking. So, Kumbaga, you are learning to think on the strategies on how you um, easily learn something. What are your learning preferences? Ganyan. Kasi, ang mga estudyante, we have our own strategies, di ba? Kung hindi pa natin alam kung ano yung mga strategies na, um, na dapat i-apply natin para mas baka learn tayo easily. So, yun yung gagawin na natin, no? Mga estudyante, we have to really search for strategies that we can apply for us to learn better, for us to 
um, apply the learnings that we that we receive no from the teachers Ganyan. another thing is developing higher order listening perhaps the most widely used classification of human thought is bloom's taxonomy benjamin bloom and his team or researchers researchers wrote extensively on the subject particularly on the six basic levels of cognitive outcomes they identified no so si benjamin bloom and his team meron silang na formulate to na basic levels of cognitive outcomes so ano daw yon ang na formulate ni benjamin bloom the six basic levels of cognitive outcomes and it is um, under no on how to develop higher order reasoning ganyan or how to measure that um, higher order reasoning the levels of um, higher order reasoning so ito yon first is knowledge comprehension application analysis synthesis and evaluation okay bloom's bloom's taxonomy is hierarchical when we talk about hierarchical, meron siyang certain step, no? Meron siyang um, varying levels na kung saan ang pinakauna ay mas um, mababa yung degree sa pangalawa. Ganyan, hierarchical, di ba? So, ang mga fundamental levels or yung mga basic levels ay yung First is knowledge, comprehension, and application. So, ang pinakauna sa lahat ng fundamental levels is knowledge. Next to knowledge is comprehension. And next to comprehension is application. So, the other three levels, yun yung mga advanced na. So, kumbaga, um, higher na, na level yung tatlo. Sunod ng application, magsa-start yung higher na na level sa analysis. Next is synthesis and the last one is evaluation. When educators refer to higher level reasoning, they are generally refer to uh, referring to analysis, synthesis and or evaluation. So if we are to um, state no what are the levels that refers to refer to higher level reasoning is yun yung analysis synthesis and evaluation next is the constructivism helping students build their understanding of science another thing no ito yung constructivism um, constructivism Constructivism is a major learning theory and is particularly applicable to teaching and learning of science. Okay, take note of that. Constructivism approach no, is very um, applicable in teaching and learning of science. Bakit ba? Bakit ba applicable to constructivism? At ano ba talaga yung constructivism? Ano yung constructivism ma? Piaget suggested that through accommodation and assimilation, individuals construct new knowledge from their experiences. Okay, ito si Piaget. Ito pangalan niya, John Piaget. Um, siya, ito yung proponent no, ng cognitive theory. Kung saan ang constructivism na approach ay naka-anchor. So, Constructivism views learning as a process in which students actively construct or build new ideas and concepts based upon prior knowledge and new information. So, balikan natin ha. Pag sinabing constructivism, ito yung process no, na nagbibuild ang mga estudyante ng new ideas and concepts based sa kanilang prior knowledge based sa mga knowledge na nakastore na sa kanilang mind. At yun ang gagamitin nila no? para makabuild ng new ideas. And here comes new information. Ganyan. Na nakuha ba? No? Ano ba ngayon? Basta constructivism, ito yung process no? na ang mga estudyante 
Sila yung nagbibuild ng new ideas and concepts based sa kanilang prior knowledge, yung mga knowledge na na-store na sa kanilang mind. Ganyan. Seymour Poppert, a student of Piaget, asserted that learning occurs particularly well, particularly well when people are engaged in constructing a product. Diba? Sabi nga daw ni Poppert, mas nakaka-learn ang mga tao ng maigi pag meron silang kinoconstruct. Na sila mismo yung nag-co-construct ng kanilang learnings, na kanilang pagbuo na kanilang ideas sa kanilang mind. Poppert's approach known as constructionism is facilitated by model building, robotics, video editing, and similar construction projects. Next one, and the last one, no? pedagogical content knowledge in science. An expert scientist is not necessarily an, an effective teacher. An expert science teacher, however, knows the difficulties students face and the misconceptions they develop and knows how to tap prior knowledge while, represent, while presenting new ideas so students can build new, correct understanding. So, pag sabihin natin pedagogical content knowledge, ito yung, from the word itself, no, pedagogy. When we talk about pedagogy, it, is, um, it refers to the science of teaching. Ang mga teacher daw, no, um, sila yung mas nakakaalam no, ng needs ng mga students. That is why, meron na silang mga strategy and approaches on how to address those needs. Kung ano ba yung gagawin nila para ang mga sujante makonek nila yung mga new ideas no na naiipresent ng mga ng teacher sa kanila and for them not to be confused on the on the things that they are absorbing no kumbaga um, yung prior knowledge nila dapat maikonekta sa new ideas na pre-present pre ng ng teachers and how the teachers introduce new topics, new lessons, new ideas. Meron ng mga strategy ang, ang teachers niyan at para din na makatch up no ng estudyante. So, when we talk about pedagogical content knowledge, it is all about the knowledge of the teachers on how they deliver, no? deliver their lessons. Ganyan. More on, um, hindi ito sa content no, ng lessons, ng, ng content ng book, but then on how to deliver, to convey the lesson to the students. Ganyan.